So uh, let me start to welcome uh, everybody to the seventh webinar of uh, this series of webinars for the CFTNC internship program. So today we'll have Rodrigo Coelho. So Rodrigo did this PhD in the uh, Universidade Federal do Rio de Janeiro with a one year internship at IBM. Then he went to work in industry as a development engineer before joining CFTC. So Rodrigo brought an expertise in fluid dynamics to CFTC, more specifically in lattice Boltzmann simulations. So he'll show us today how the interface of swarms of bacteria behave. Thank you, Rodrigo, for accepting to talk, and the internet is yours. Thank you, Christophe, for your introduction. Um, thank you all for coming. Um, <clears throat> so um, in this presentation, I'm going to show some results on the dynamics of uh, interfaces in swarming bacteria. Um, this uh, was done in, uh, together with Nuno, Professor Nuno Araújo and Professor uh, Margarida Telodagram. Uh, so uh, first, a few words about the bacterial motility. A bacteria can behave in different ways, depends on the environment or and on the concentration of a bacteria. For instance, um, in these videos, you see the bacteria E. coli, um, on the left, um, they are more scattered and um, in a more uh, liquid medium, and they, they are swimming. So they, they propagate in a, in a certain direction and change sometimes due to thermal fluctuations or collision with obstacles. And on the right, uh, they are more densely packed and they, they are swarming, due to this, uh, behaving this um, in this chaotic uh, motion. Um, so uh, it depends a lot on the medium, uh, on the concentration of nutrients or, or on the, um, the viscosity of the medium, of the friction. So uh, here is another example of uh, swarming bacteria. It, it's another kind of bacteria, the pseudomonas. And um, uh, initially, you have uh, a point with, uh, high, with a high concentration of this bacteria, and after 12 hours, it reached the, uh, the limits of this, uh, of this system. And uh, <clears throat> it is known that uh, the bacteria on the edges, um, they, they are different from the bacteria on the, the center of these filaments. On the edges, they are more elongated and more flagellated, and why on the... Why, elsewhere, uh, in the center of these uh, domains, uh, they are more uh, circular or spherical. And um, <clears throat> uh, it's not uh, well understood why the bacteria behave in this way, but uh, it's known that bacteria which swarm, which are able to swarm, they are more resistant to antibiotics. So uh, it's believed that uh, it's a way to, uh, to propagate uh, uh, in the system uh, without um, uh, without dying uh, with the antibiotics in the medium. Uh, so the, the motivation for this particular work that I will show uh, was uh, an experimental study in, in which they studied the, the propagation of interfaces in, in swarms of Serracia marcensis. is another uh, is another bacteria. So uh, whenever I talk about experiments, I, I'm referring to this uh, particular work. It was a nature communication from 2018. Um, commonly found in, in our bathroom. Um, they are on the tiles mostly, and um, they are elongated, as you can see here. Um, and in this experiment, they, they kill the bacteria inside a certain domain using ultraviolet light. Uh, they say that the, the bacteria passivated, but it, it is an euphemism, they actually die. And uh, in, uh, so initially they had this kind of system, bacteria uh, moving around system. And uh, they shed light in a certain domain, killing the bacteria here. And so they, they study the propagation of this active passive interface. As I'll show here, um, in this slide, I showed the, the study for a circular interface. So initially, they have this chaotic state. Um, they shed ultraviolet light in the center, um, killing the bacteria. You see that the, this is the velocity field, and the, the bacteria are static. And they studied the, how 
how long it takes to close this circular interface. They also stood a flat interface, as you can see here. Um, so the, the interface here propagates uh, upwards. And here they, they, they shed light on the top of the system. So uh, it looks like a, an erosion process. Uh, see that the, uh, the dyed bacteria uh, are being dissolved in the, the active domain. Um, so how to model this kind of system, these swarms of Serracia marcensis? Um, we use a, a model in the literature for active liquid crystals, uh, but uh, first, uh, what, is, uh, what are active liquid crystals? Active particles in general are particles which are able to extract the energy from their environment and convert it in, into directed motion. Um, if they are elongated under certain conditions, as uh, in the system here, uh, they form this chaotic uh, motion. Uh, it is known as active turbulence, but um, this is a very poorly understood topic. Uh, even the, the classical turbulence is not too well understood. Uh, it's known as the, the last unsolved problems in classical physics. Um, so um, here we see a mixture of um, microtubule kinases, these are components of the cells. Um, and if they have nutrients around, um, they, they form this turbulent state. Uh, other examples of active liquid crystals are dense colonies of uh, bacteria. Uh, as you can see here, uh, they have a preferential direction, they, they swim in a, in a given direction. And even uh, macroscopic systems as uh, shoes of fish. So uh, what are liquid crystals? They are uh, widely used in uh, display technology. Probably you are watching this presentation in a, in a liquid crystal display. And they are formed by um, uh, elongated molecules, uh, which are able to align according to the electric field. So they can be in two, um, in two phases. The ordered phase, which is known as pneumatic phase, and if they are disordered, we say that they are in desotropic phase. Uh, our systems, uh, we have the two phases coexisting uh, with an interface between them. So um, the model we use have many ingredients. Here are some of them. First of all, uh, we do not model the individual particles and their interactions, like in molecular, uh, molecular dynamics. Uh, what you have is a continuum of directions uh, which change uh, with time and position. And um, these particles, uh, which are modeled in a continual model, uh, can align with the flow. Uh, the two phases of the, the liquid crystal, the pneumatic and isotropic, uh, <clears throat> can have a phase transition, one can become the other. Uh, we account for this, uh, we penalize distortion in the system with the elastic energy. And uh, we also introduce uh, usually used in uh, models for passive liquid crystals. But uh, for active liquid crystals, we introduce this extra ingredient, which is the active stress. This enters in the Navier Stokes equation and accounts for the activity of the particles. So uh, we solve two equations uh, which are coupled. One of them, the Beres Edwards, is solved with finite difference and the Navier Stokes with Lex Boltzmann. Um, this, um, the, the Beres Edwards equation gives the, the time evolution for the liquid crystal itself, for the alignment of the particles in the phase transition. Um, and the Navier Stokes equation gives the, the fluid flow. So um, it is. It is almost the same used for passive liquid crystal. This term comes from the from the passive uh, from, from the liquid crystal theory. Uh, but we have an extra term, as I told you, the, the active stress. It's proportion to to an activity parameter zeta, and it also takes into account the friction with the substrate because our bacteria are on a substrate. Uh, so here are examples of our simulations. Uh, so first, for a circular interface, uh, we see on the left uh, the order parameter where the, the red represents the, the pneumatic phase and the blue the, the isotropic phase. 
uh, as in the experiment, initially have this chaotic motion, uh, and then we make a hole on the system. Uh, this is done with the laser in the experimental system. And, um, <clears throat> we, and we allow the system to evolve. Uh, and we see that uh, this, uh, this interface closes. Uh, on the right, we see uh, the velocity field. And inside this, uh, this isotropic domain, you see, we see that the velocity is zero. Uh, so we, we have effectively the, an active passive interface as in the experiment. We also studied the propagation of a flat interface. Uh, we see that it goes upwards uh, as in the experiment. Uh, the interface width is, uh, is maintained, it's more or less constant with time. So uh, how to make sure that our model is reasonable to, to model these, uh, uh, these swarms of bacteria? So in, in this experimental work, we have measured many statistical properties of this system. Uh, here I show four of them, but there are more. Uh, one um, is the velocity distribution of the, of the particles. They make your, basically an histogram of velocities. Um, and uh, it follows a maxwell boltzmann distribution. Um, so we can uh, try to reproduce this with our model and see if it, if it follows this. Uh, we have also measured the, the special correlation function for the vortices field. Uh, we see that it decays uh, with the distance um, until it reaches a minimum, it's below zero, and then uh, the correlation becomes zero. No? This is characteristic from, um, uh, from systems uh, with, um, with vortices more or less the same size. Um, so when the correlation becomes zero, this, this gives a measure of the average size of the, the, the vortices. So the, the time correlation uh, decays with, the, with time. And uh, here is, is more interesting, the, the energy spectrum of this, um, of this active turbulence because um, they, they have found some power loss that we can uh, check in our uh, model if it follows the same. So initially it increases uh, with a power law of 530. It means that the particle are injecting energy uh, in the system for this range of, uh, of uh, wave numbers. And it decays with uh, another power law, uh, minus 830. It uh, means that the, the, the energy is being dissipated in this range. So uh, we'll try to reproduce the same with the model. Um, we do the same for, for five different activities. So the distributions have the same profile, the maximum distribution, uh, but with different values, of course. Um, the, the, speci the special correlation um, is also different for different uh, activities, but it's nicely, the curves nicely collapse for if you divide the, the distance by the active length. The active length, um, is uh, it depends on the activity. It's, um, it's found to a competition between elastic distortions and the active stress. So um, if you divide this, the, the curves collapse. And uh, well, have also measured the, the time correlation function, we also found the collapse if you divide by non-dimensional time. And the, the energy spectrum, um, we plot here the, the power loss uh, that suggested in the, in the experiment. Uh, we note that even the experiment, it's not um, straightforward to say that uh, the power loss are exactly this. They have not measured, you just compare if it's uh, close. So here, um, I have found that it's not too far at least. In, and um, so it matches uh, the, the power loss found in the experiment. So um, we can say that it's reasonable to use this, uh, this model for active liquid crystals to, to model the swarms of bacteria. So uh, we can use this model to make predictions after validating and uh, comparing uh, with these statistics. Um, one uh, prediction. Uh, we can relate the closing time for this, uh, for this circular interface with the activity because it's not done the experiment. And we think that it can be used to, um, 
to estimate the, the activity in experimental that decays with the activity, decays quadratically. And this observation can, uh, as I said, can be used to develop protocols uh, to, to estimate the, the activity in swarming bacteria. Uh, we also studied the propagation of flat interfaces. Um, so it propagates uh, with constant interface width, uh, as in the experiment. Um, <clears throat> uh, we relate the, the propagation, the, the, the velocity of the, this interface with the activity. And uh, we can see here in the even uh, in the experiment and in, in the simulation that there are oscillations in the in this interface. Um, we can um, can make a, a Fourier transform of these uh, of these interface positions to to find the, the oscillation mode, and um, this is known as uh, the structure factor of this interface. And they have measured this in the experiment. It's here. Uh, in the experiment, they found that it's close to, to a power law minus two. This power law comes from the from the equilibrium theory. It is the, the expected power law for an interface uh, fluctuating due to thermal uh, to thermal noise, no? and uh, <clears throat> um, and we compare in our model if these oscillations uh, follow approximately the, the the same power law, and it's not far at least. But there are some differences. Uh, we observe that this um, the slope of this um, structure factor uh, changes uh, with the, the activity. It's not far from true, but changes. It is expected because our system is not exactly in equilibrium. It is uh, an active system, actually. So another prediction. Um, we wanted to, to stop an interface uh, to understand how to stop. Um, we have tried to uh, change in the global fields as uh, we thought that if you change the, the global temperature of the system or the global friction, we could stop interf the propagation interface. But uh, actually, if we could only stop with a gradient of friction. So uh, this, this is, can be interesting in the experiment. Uh, if you want to study the, the steady state of, a, of an interface, you want to stop then and study the fluctuations, for instance. Uh, or if you want to isolate uh, the, the swarm in a certain region, so it can have a gradient or friction. And this gradient can be tuned in the experiment with the concentration of agar. Um, this is uh, this controls uh, the, the, the viscosity of it, and um, <clears throat> so here in our simulations we have um, have this kind of system where on the bottom we have low uh, friction and on the top uh, high friction, and the uh, initially we have uh, the pneumatic system with the same activity, and th this interface stop in a certain position, which depends on the activity. Um, so uh, we relate this uh, position with the, the threshold of friction for which the, 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 the interface still propagates. So um, below, we have uh, measured this for many different activities. So below this line, uh, we have a propagation interface. Uh, and above, uh, this pneumatic shrinks until the, the system becomes uh, completely isotropic. So, uh, to conclude, uh, we have uh, studied the applicability of this um, to study uh, swarming bacteria, the interface in swarming bacteria, and we actually found that it's um, it reproduces many statistical properties. So, um, it's a, a good model to, to choose and to make predictions. Uh, some of them uh, is suggested here, uh, suggests how to, to estimate the, the, or to measure the, uh, the activity in, in experiments you know, of swarming bacteria. And stop a propagation interface for a certain position so we can control the domain for which the swarm is. And, uh, and that's it. Uh, thank you for our attention.
Okay, so thank you, Rodrigo, for the nice presentation. So we have one uh, question already from an anonymous. So um, what is there a characteristic uh, Reynolds number for to find to have uh, um, active turbulence? Uh, no, but uh, they are they usually develop for for low Reynolds number. Uh, that's the difference from uh, from classical turbulence. This uh, this is a mesoscopic system. Um, the euro bars are around uh, 10, uh, 10 micrometers. Uh, they are in this scale, more or less, and the velocities are not too high, but the system is too chaotic. So it's, it's different from classical turbulence where we have uh, turbulence in isotopic fluids. And the difference here is that the, the, the fluid is active, uh, but yeah, the, the Reynolds number are, are typically low, much, much lower than one. Okay, so uh, I have one question. You measure the width of the interface as a function of time in the simulations also, or just in? I have measured, but it's not here in the presentation. It's it uh, similar to the experiment. Yes, sir. Yeah, it's more or less constant. You can see here only the, for for four different times, and uh, so it's not it's not increasing too much. Initially, it's it's, it's flatter because. Uh, uh, our interface is init initially flat, uh, like a, a laser exactly cut for a flat interface. So it takes some time to relax. But then uh, it's like here in the experiment that it increases a bit in, on the, in the beginning and then uh, remains flat or remains constant. I was asking that because of your image uh, in the next slides of this the no. interface seems a little bit... Uh, Probably here. Uh, not this one, no. the, the, more, more the, the ones with the friction. Ah, okay. Ah, okay. Yeah, you see some, uh, so I was wondering uh, what is the behavior of the width of the interface? Yeah, here the, the system is, uh, is, more, is narrower, um, but uh, it's, it's approximately constant with time, even here. Okay. So, uh, so there's no more questions. So I would like to thank, I, wait, we have uh, one question. So this is a more of personal question for, for you. Okay. So what is the difference between working uh, uh, on a industry like IBM or uh, on academic world? Oh, that's a good question. <laughs> um, well, uh, well, that's set by your, um, by your clients, uh, usually you have clients that uh, ask, uh, imagine um, in a software company, uh, they want a specific field to, to, uh, to treat their, uh, their, their images or their data. Um, and you have to do this, this task. While in, in academia, I would say, uh, in my uh, short <laughs> experience that you, you have uh, more uh, more freedom to to choose your topic that you um, that you work not com uh, it's not completely free um, you still have um, to follow uh, your research plan uh, still have uh, colleagues which expect something to you but uh, you, you are free at least to choose your uh, your approach or uh, the specific problem that you work um yeah i would say that <laughs> <laughs> okay so uh since there's no more questions thank you rodrigo and uh, we'll see you next week for the next uh, webinar thank you thank you